as judgments. You see, there's certain principles in the Bible. Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verse one and two. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. And that promise is that, uh, you'll be, that your days will be long upon the land. God made that promise to the nation of Israel. He said if you, if you obey the Lord and you obey your parents and you honor your parents, your days will be long upon the land. He was saying, I will bless you as a nation and you're going to live in this land and God is going to prosper you. What is that? Obeying your parents. You know, I don't think that's just talking about children who are in the home. So parents can just say, you know, to their children, you've got to obey me. The Lord said, obey me. That's part of it. That's for sure. But I believe that obeying your parents means that when you have godly parents, uh, when you're outside, of, out, out of that home and you're an adult, you continue to live by the precepts and principles your parents taught you. I believe honoring your parents, I believe honoring your parents is showing them honor and honoring the way that they live. Folks, listen, we, we've gotten far away from that in this country. The, the younger generation has been taught, you don't have to listen to the older people. That's a bad teaching. It's not good. It's the route to judgment. In 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter, verse 13, meats for the belly and the belly for meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, for the, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. Let me tell you something. Young people, you're already listening, but I want your attention. Immorality will cause you to have bad health. Immorality will shorten the length of a nation's life. God judges immorality. You say, preacher, you can't say a thing like that. I didn't say it, the apostle Paul said it. If I understand this correctly, let me read it again. Meats for the belly and the belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. America is turning away from God and holding and doing things the Lord will not blink at. <laughs> you know, people cannot prosper physically without the blessing of the Lord. We don't, we don't just come, we don't, our health is not just a matter of, of uh, ourselves. I believe it's important what we eat. I believe it's important the way we eat. America is, is we, and I, I think probably I've certainly done it. I think probably I've been, guilt, I've been guilty of it. I think probably some other folks are. America is guilty of overeating, overeating, eating in fast food places, eating the wrong kind of food. America is guilty of gluttony. America is feel, guilty of drinking and all kinds of things that God has said don't do. And folks, we're paying the price for it. Now some of us show it a little bit more. But some of you skinny people walking around here are just as bad as some of those folk, uh, folks that show it. What I'm saying is we need God's blessing. And, and, and God's blessing is a matter of obedience. It's a matter of taking this book and searching out God's Word and, and applying this book to our life. Listen, this book cannot change our life until we let God work in our life and apply this book to our life. When it says change, we need to change. See, when people think God doesn't count, they're in trouble. When people harden their hearts, they're in trouble. A lot of times people seem to think I'm, I'm okay, I, I don't have to be saved. Even when they're in trouble. I knew a young man one time about 25 years old, many years ago. Had a little knot come on his leg. He was not a Christian, didn't go to church. Really didn't have much regard for Christians. At a little tiny knot, I think, I never did see it, but I think he said it was about the big around the end of your little finger. Just came there one day. 
It got to bother me. Got to hurt me. Went to the doctor. Took a biopsy. Cancer. The serious kind. The fast kind. I don't know what they called it. Now this young man had a decision to make. He could humble himself before God and surrender his heart to the Lord and cry out to God or he could harden his heart. Praise God. He started going to church and he got saved and he surrendered his life to the Lord and he lived for the Lord. You say, well, praise the Lord. Did the Lord heal him? No, he didn't. He died. But bless your heart, he's in heaven tonight. He didn't harden his heart. He surrendered to God. You see, you know, we, when we do things, when we, when we abuse our bodies and when we do things that are wrong, listen, whenever we disobey God's word, listen, you, the, you can't enjoy the blessings of God and disobey him. You can't prosper physically and disobey God. It's going to catch up with us somewhere. They tell me today that chronic diseases are on the increase Heart disease, strokes, diabetes, other diseases have increased 44% since 1995. Oh, how important it is to surrender our whole life to Christ. Amen? See, not just part of our life. God wants us to, to, to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. We talked about that in Sunday school class this morning. The last thing. People cannot prosper financially without the blessing of the Lord. Here in verse 20, let me read my text again. And the Spirit of God came upon Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada, the priest, which stood above the people, and said unto them, Thus saith God, Why transgress ye the commandments of the Lord, that ye cannot prosper? Because ye have forsaken the Lord, he hath also forsaken you. Now before I preach this point, let me clarify a couple of things here. First of all, the Bible says God is good to everybody. God is, he, you know what grace is? Grace is, un, it's, it's God's mercy, his love that we don't deserve. God, God loves people and he loves to be kind to people. God is kind to everybody. Over in, uh, Matthew, the fifth chapter, Sermon on the Mount, verse 45, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the, uh, the, uh, on the unjust. God, God is good to us, folks. He's been good to this country. He's good to Russia. He's good to China. God shows his goodness because he wants people to see that he's a loving God and he wants them to be saved. He wants people to come to him and he, he loves people and he shows them his goodness so they will come to him. Now, I, I don't believe you can prosper the way you need to prosper, especially if you're a Christian. If you don't believe in God the way you're supposed to. God has his purposes. I know people make money who are not saved. I know the devil is able to give people opportunities and chances, and he does. And, and, and people make money, and, and the devil uses that. And I know that a lot of people who are not Christians and who are atheists and who hate God, a lot of people have money. I wish today so many of them didn't have money. But they do. God is good to them, hoping that they'll get saved. But you know, I believe America has committed two great evils that has brought us to the judgment of God. You see, we're different than other countries. We have a Christian foundation. Everybody say amen. amen. We have churches almost on every corner still. We have Bibles in dime stores. And I, don't know if, I don't know if there is a, such a thing as a dime store. We have Bible, it's a dollar store now. We have Bibles in dollar stores now. Just walk in, buy you a King James Bible. So the print's pretty small, but you can, you can do it. We have, we have a knowledge of God that China does not have. We have a knowledge of God that Russia does not have. We have a knowledge of God that other countries don't have. I don't believe we can get away with what a lot of countries do. God's not going to let it happen. 